All right, so we're going to review muscles. Now, there may be some new material here for you. Some of the lectures that we missed uh, that week after spring break, I may hit the high points of that without going into a tremendous amount of detail. And we're going to get the important things about the muscle out of the way now in this review. All right, so one of the things that we did have time to deal with and we spent some time with is the neuromuscular junction and sliding to the degree and excitation and action coupling. Now, as I mentioned, I don't expect you to remember step by step the events of the neuromuscular junction or uh, the events that uh, cause the filaments to slide past each other. All of that is not important. There are places there that are important, and those are places where something is triggered and it causes more steps to happen. So let's walk through our events here at the neuromuscular junction, step by step, and talk about where it's important. So here is our expertly drawn show. And we're going to the muscle fiber. Again, all expertly drawn. I may have mentioned this with my dad. Let's look at response. Fairly surely. So let's uh let's lie on here. All right. Let's go through this again step by step. So here's our axon for the neuron. Action potential. I'm going to travel down this axon. The synaptic bulb. At the synaptic bulb, it's going to open calcium channel. We get calcium going in. Now, again, those are voltage gated calcium channels. The action potential opens them, so they're voltage. It goes in, our neurotransmitter goes out, and of course, our neurotransmitter here at the neuromuscular junction is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine binds to its receptor. And its receptor is sodium coming here. There's a positive ion coming in. As the muscle fiber becomes more and more positive, we reach a threshold and we fire another action potential. And that action potential is going to travel down the sarcolemma, the cell membrane of the muscle fiber, down the tubule, up, down, and out. As it goes down that T tubule, the transverse tubule. It's going to open more voltage-gated calcium channels on that structure, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that's going to let calcium out into the cell. So that's an important point. Our trigger or contraction That increase in intracellular calcium. That's the big step right there. That calcium coming out is the important thing. Now, we talked about some rules while we were still in session. Rules involving that acetylcholine receptor here. Remember that. Anything that prevents
Acetylcholine from binding. Will prevent contraction. Let's talk about a good example of this. All right. So this is actually a really good clinical of how this will work. Now, when I say that anything that will prevent acetylcholine from binding will prevent contraction, I mean, up that calcium from coming in so that acetylcholine can't go out. Um, use an acetylcholine antagonist that blocks the acetylcholine receptor. Or if we just get rid of the receptor. And that's what we'll talk about now. So here again is that structure, the motor end plate with our little acetylcholine receptors on it here. And here it's been nicely drawn neuron. Acetylcholine has to come out and bind to the receptor. But what if I lose the receptor? Well, now acetylcholine can't bind to its receptor. Anything that prevents acetylcholine from binding to its receptor will prevent contraction. But just let's look at one of them in this example. So now not as much acetylcholine can bind. Remember that all of your muscles are in a constant state of contraction. We call that muscle tone. Muscle tone, constant contraction of the muscles. Well, now that we lost one of those acetylcholine receptors, that muscle cone is going to start going down. We don't get as much tension on the muscles. And the muscles are a little slower to respond because there's not as many receptors. A condition called myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition, meaning the immune system is taking out those receptors and it's characterized by decreased muscle tone and muscle weakness especially in the facial muscles often the eyelids will droop corners of the mouth muscles of the hands will be weaker there's just not as much tone there because we don't get as much acetylcholine binding now we can treat some of the symptoms remember our other rule here Anything that causes more acetylcholine to bind will prevent relaxation. More acetylcholine binding, you get more muscle tone. And so that's what we do. We use a uh, pharmaceutical that increases the amount of acetylcholine out here in the synapse. So that there's more of it there to bind. Remember what removes acetylcholine? Acetylcholine esterase. Acetylcholine esterase, this enzyme that tears acetylcholine apart in the synapse. If we block acetylcholine esterase, we prevent relaxation. We get increased muscle tone. In this case, it alleviate some of the symptoms of myasthenia gravis. In the extreme, it would cause your muscles to spasm and you wouldn't be able to relax them to death. We'll talk more about neurotoxins and acetylcholine when we get to the nervous system we'll have a little more time. All right, let's uh, go back to this idea of calcium being out there. So we have this increase in intracellular calcium. Calcium binds to troponin, at least in skeletal muscle. Let's make our troponin here. There's troponin. Or sorry, not troponin, this is our actin strand. I'll show you troponin in just a second. Actin myofilament. Here's our 
And then here, we have Chipotle. So calcium binds to troponin. Troponin moves tropomyosin. You should remember tropomyosin, but blocks the active sites. On active. And when tropos, troponin moves tropomyosin out of the way, it exposes those, those binding sites or active sites on actin. And then actin can bind the myosin, and myosin can bind to actin. Then we have our whole myosin head. We've got um, ATP being broken down into ADP and an inorganic phosphate by the ADPase. I would encourage you to go on YouTube and find an animation of this. Obviously, I'm not animating this. What you need to remember here at skeletal muscle is just really that. calcium binds to troponin and skeletal muscle. Troponin moves to tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is blocking the active sites. Then myosin binds actin. You should remember that this ATP here breaks the cross bridge. We talked a little bit about rigor mortis. When you don't have any ATP, there's nothing to break the cross bridge. The bridge forms and it's stuck. So the muscles are locked. All right. Other things. Something that will be on your exam is you'll have to um, label a circular. So make sure you can do that. Circular is the unit. <coughs> excuse me, the unit for trident muscle. Um, structures that you should look at on the Z disk, M line, band, band, um, H zone. You need to be able to label all of those things. Uh, go back in your notes and make sure that you look at that and review those. Um, in other news, this exam will not be as many questions as your other exams. We're going to make this work. Your, your final exam, which is the nervous system, will be standardized, like it will be the standard sort of test I would give. This is not. This is pale comparison to my standard muscle exam that I would normally give you in class. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you, but it is way toned down. We have not been over Look at the slideshow with the different muscle types, ATP synthesis. Like I said, this basically is our first, and we're doing this. It is open book, open note, whatever you've got. Part of this exam is is really, can you find this information if you don't already know it? And, and I hate to ask you that for you, but um. The, the lab exam will be diagrams and go over those lab videos. But again, it's open note for that. So you should have no issues doing it. I've talked to people that are doing microbiology and they have a similar philosophy. At this point. Um, right now, I need to get you to the muscle stuff. Um, so fewer questions, focus on that neuromuscular junction. Um, terms that you want to go back in your notes and look at. Um, 
the non-contractile elements of muscle. For that matter, you know what? Um, make sure that you know your muscle qualities. Right, muscle is contractile and conductive and extensible and elastic. And it's excitable. I know that you have notes over cardiac muscle and smooth muscle. Ignore. We'll cover it in AMP2. I cover it in AMP2 anyway. Um, I usually like to talk about it in AMP1 just to give you an intro to what we're talking about there. But I'm not worried about it. This exam is strictly the skeletal muscle stuff that we've talked about. Look at that uh, thing with the muscle metabolism that's on YouTube already. Go back and review. I'm going to put your exam up probably sometime tomorrow or Tuesday, and it will be up for a period of time. Like I said, there's at least one of your classmates that's already been diagnosed, and I don't know his state of health, but he's got other things to worry about, as all of you do. I'm sure that, much like myself, you have a ton of kids running around that you're supposed to be trying to help through homeschool and you've got your own school and you've got work or maybe you don't have work and it's just a big deal. I get it. I get it. We're adjusting. But I will tell you, um, if at all possible, stay home. Don't get out unless you have to. If you have to go to the store, wear a mask. There's no point in wearing gloves. Just wash your hands. Touch your face, which you won't if you're wearing a mask. All right, I'm fairly sure I hear kids that are supposed to be in bed that are actually screaming. So I'm going to go now. Um, look over the stuff that we talked about here. Keep your eye on the big picture for skeletal muscle. Remember, your textbook is online and free at openstacks.com openstacks.com free textbooks textbooks should be free rock and roll go there if you have anything that you need to look up seriously this exam you're going to be fine and we'll move on to the nervous system and we'll get back on track um, starting with the nervous system you'll get to see me again in actual videos rather than just this whiteboard crap. All right, so look for your exam. I'll send out an email anyway. Look for your exam either tomorrow or the next day, and then we will move on with the nervous system. Have a good night.